Liz. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm nice good. to see you. Nice to see you too. Welcome back. Thanks. Glad I'm, to move, I'm moving my necklace up so everyone can see how pretty it is. So pretty. Um, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. We have yeah. tons to talk about. I know. I'm so excited that we are recapping some of our most favorite moments from our recent interviews while you were gone. Yes. And you had fantastic people on while we were gone. Like I was glued to every interview. It was so good, wasn't it? It was really rich and really wonderful and really good. I have to grab something behind me because my tea is going to be ready and I don't have a container for the tea bag. Uh -oh. Andy! That there's a cupboard right there. That's handy. It is handy. So you watched every interview and you were super riveted. Tell me who your favorite was. All of them. I don't have a favorite because they all came from such different angles. No, isn't that the best? Let me first say I worship at the feet of Soraya. So <laughs> um, Let's just start there. And Laura Brandeo is a friend. I consider her a friend now. Uh, yeah. I feel like we've all been through the things together. Yeah. Um, talked about really hard stuff. And um, I think women empowering their money, right? And not being afraid, that was such a gem. Um, so I, I think that, I think we have a lot to talk about. Let's start with Soraya. Okay. So my most favorite part, well, I had a lot of favorite parts because I love her, but um, one of my most favorite, there's two things. The desire to make money makes you a bad woman. Mm -hmm. And when women make more than men, they lie about their income on applications for loans. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, so this has been interesting. Um, I've always been the breadwinner and I've never lied about it. Um, and so I find this very interesting. Uh, I've had a lot of women friends say to me that if they made more money than their husbands, they would be uncomfortable with that. And I don't, I just don't understand it. And I'm, we have, we have different kind of backgrounds. So there's a lot of things that I don't understand that people don't understand sometimes and vice versa, by the way. Um, and that's why I like talking about all this. Um, my favorite part of the Soraya um, interview was when she talked about how she got in line on the red carpet and the man thought she was the usher to take him to his seat. Yes. There for the red carpet. Um, I've had those moments. I've had um, conferences where, because I'm a pretty casually dressed person 24 seven. Um, I don't think I've left my Birkenstocks or tennis shoes and God, I don't remember when. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been at a table where a man from a, let's say Texas with the belt buckles and the cowboy hats and the jacket and the jeans is telling me what a great producer they are and how they're killing it and everything's wonderful and never ever ask me about my business only for me to walk up on stage later and get my, later and get my President's Club award. Um, them not knowing ever that they didn't touch my numbers, but they right. were, they didn't know who I was. They just made the assumption. So that, that um, hit home for me mm -hmm. um, pretty hard. So those, those, yeah. those two gems with Soraya were really great. I thought they really were. They were, she just, the way she just lays it down is just, it's so delightful to listen to her speak. I'm so glad she's speaking at the conference because I just love listening to her talk. It just really, I me. want Soraya on my team. If it were dodgeball or something, I would be like, and I don't even, I'm not good at dodgeball and I don't play dodgeball. It stresses me out. And I don't know Soraya, but I don't even care what team it is. I'm picking Soraya first. Uh, it, it's going to be a toss up between you and Soraya because you can choose her first. I'll go second. It's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand. That's amazing. Um, I, um, yeah, I just really, just really enjoyed. For those of you that are watching, if you did not see the interview with Soraya, by all means, go back and check it out because it was a gem. Yeah. So I also got to talk with Lara Brandeo a couple of times. Yes, you did. And they were great. And um, it was really fun to talk with her about... That's all sorry. sorts of things. 
That's Arby. He's really mad. He's outside the door. I just texted. Oh, oh, did he just did he just bark at him here? Because I was I was listening to my own self speak. Um. So, um, what were your favorite parts about the interviews with Laura Brandeo? So I love that Laura was so darn comfortable um, talking about the sudden awareness of the whiteness of our industry. Yeah. Um, it was breathtaking for me and it gave me hope uh, mm -hmm. because Laura is such a kind, generous, mm -hmm. positive, optimistic, smart, intelligent. I mean, I could go on about Laura. Yeah. Um, she's one of my favorite people too. And she, the humbleness and the vulnerability she showed in saying that I thought was really huge because this is, this is where uh, me as a white woman and Laura as a white woman um, and every other white woman in this space need to acknowledge um, that, yeah, we're women and we're a minority, but we're still white women. Uh, and that's different. And I think that she's seeing it. And I, I, I really, I loved that. I love that. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking with her because um, she, she took some risks in having the conversation. And I'm so grateful that she's so supportive of what we're doing with the conference. And I hope she, I hope she gets all the stuff out of the conference that we're hoping to give to everybody, because I think there's going to be so many points of learning and so many nuggets. And what she talked about really tied into what Kina was saying. When Kina was talking about, she said, be willing to be challenged on issues of race and racism. Yeah. Because, um, and I love that Kina and I got to talk after we talked with, um, after I talked with Lara, because, you know, she was really talking about, and my notes are uh, sideways, but she got into a little bit about redlining and, and that racism is a systemic issue, especially in housing and the mortgage industry. And so I really love that Lara had that awareness as she was looking around this room of women going, oh, there's still so much more work to do. And then Kina just brought it home by talking about being willing to be challenged on issues of race, because if we're not willing to be challenged about it and we're not willing to address it, then, then we can't change the system. Yeah, I, it's so uncomfortable for white women, mm -hmm. for white people to talk about racism. Um, and as a white woman, I'm gonna speak for myself. There was a time that you were just so afraid you were gonna say it wrong and do it wrong, right? And there's still those moments where I'm afraid, like I'll, I'll go to say something or type something and I erase it and I go back and I try and put some thought into it. And it's really helped to have kids, by the way. Uh, so uh, they help me a lot in, in, in my journey of language and words and how I use the, the phrases and the things. And it, it's, it, feels, it feels terrifying at times. So um, I think that the best way I can describe it is we have to be okay with doing it wrong. Yes. And we have to not be afraid of people telling us we're doing it wrong. Yes. And uh, if we can just let, um, let that fear and that uh, gut defensive reaction go, I think that that's, that is the place you start. Like even I have to take a breath sometimes and go, listen, I did it wrong. I didn't mean to do it wrong, but I did it wrong. Tell me how to do it better and just not be offended by it. And you and I were talking, uh, I listened to this Brene Brown um, interview with Austin Channing Brown. I love her. And she used this great analogy about racism and I freaking loved it. It was, um, we're not trying to make anybody feel guilty. Yeah. We don't want anybody to feel guilty about race. What we want is to look at it like, okay, you bought a house. The United States is the house, right? Mm -hmm. And the previous owners neglected the shit out of the house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't um, deal with the sewer system. They never clean. There's cobwebs, there's rats, there's pests. You're moving into this house. You just don't pretend like all that crap isn't there, yeah. right? Yeah. You 
address the issues one at a time and you deal with them and you move forward. And I think if we can look at it like more like a maintenance issue, uh, I like in all this, it's oversimplifying, I know, but if we can look at it like a maintenance issue, like nobody want, I don't feel guilty because somebody else didn't take care of the house, but I sure as hell want to fix the house because I love the house, right? So I think that's how we have to move forward when it comes to these discussions. Yeah, I think it's, I actually, um, I was at a, I love Austin Channing Brown, first of all, let me just say, like, woo, that woman, she's so good. Uh, I was at a conference with her actually a couple of years ago um, in 2018. And, um, one of the, there was a panel on racism and, uh, this woman got up and a white woman got up and said, you know, I, I feel really bad for being white Mm. and all, I mean, it was a whole panel of, of, uh, people of color. And they were all like, we would like you to stop with the white guilt and stop feeling bad for the way you were born. You didn't choose to be born this color. We didn't choose to be born this color. We have come into the world just like you have. And the the, we we have all been born this way. Please stop feeling bad for being white and start doing the work. Right. And there's a difference between those two things. And I think it's really important that we be willing to have risky conversations as women in the mortgage industry to talk about how we can clean up the house and do maintenance. So I really love that. And I'm really glad we brought it up. And I love that Kina is really, um, speaking of Kina, that interview was so great when she was talking about creating new possibilities and giving back to others. And then the thing, the nugget that I loved really from Kina was that um, coaching, because we want more women in the mortgage industry to get coached. And one of the things Kina says is, Coaching really helps you get the results you desire to achieve. And that's why you hire a coach. You hire a coach to help you get the results you desire to achieve because you have to get out of your own way. And that's really why we're presenting this conference this way is because we really want to help women get out of their own way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we want to help those that want to help themselves. Like we want to work through the things. We all have come with our baggage into this, into this, into our jobs, into our lives. Yeah. And we all have our blocks when it comes to money and we all have our blocks when it comes to success and we all have self-sabotage and we all have self-doubt and we all have imposter syndrome and we all have, so let's just, let's just learn how to deal with it all. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm so excited about the conference because all the people that are speaking are going to be amazing. And you know what I loved? Leora Ruthen talking about her change in her job and how she's gone back home Mm -hmm. where she grew up and that she's learning she's now not just in charge of mortgage but she's in charge of lending for the credit union and how she's learning all sorts of things about poverty and um how institutions perpetuate um poverty and lending practices being not helpful and we had a great conversation uh, I, I hope that people realize that redlining isn't over, by the way. So um, let's, let's just put that out there. I know everybody says that's in the past, but it's not. If you look at all of the um, punishments that the uh, NMLS, the CFPB, all of, all of the people that are in charge of regulating us are doing every year, you have uh, cases of uh, current redlining cases being punished. Um, and so it, we're kidding ourselves if we think that we aren't part of a system that's perpetuating this. We, we're just telling ourselves something that's not true. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just an education level, looking outside of your space and, and wanting to see that these things still exist. So, uh, and so Leora's insight was great. I love that. I love it. I love it. Yeah, me too. I really did. And Andy Blackwell. Holy crap. So first of all, what I loved about Andy is that she is like a third generation real estate agent. Yes. Unheard of. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Like one of my favorite things about all our interviews with all these women is they're like, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be involved in the mortgage industry. And then Andy's like, I didn't think I was going to grow up and be in real estate because I watched my family go through it. But here I am. Right. I love that vulnerability of her straight out of the gate. But then I really loved um, 
um, what she talked about, about, um, about this vulnerability that she thinks is just so important for people to, to just jump into. I just really, I loved it. Well, I think the business model, and this is what I've been pushing against forever when we're in this industry is kind of this, um, and I've talked about a lot of times, is this um, win or lose, um, you know, we had, we've had some posts talking about assassins, books on assassins being great business models and teachers. And I, I think that that leaves all the vulnerability uh, outside of what we do. It makes us think we have to be the professional, the fake it till you make it, this whole, I, I think vulnerability is so important in everything that we do. Absolutely yeah. everything we do. Yeah, and one of the nuggets that Andy said was that training geared towards sound bites robs us of authenticity. Yep. And that, I mean, like that all these posts you share with me from all these men in the mortgage industry that are just like, yeah, like talking about assassins and like, like their posts are geared, geared towards sound bites. Like, and and there's, it, it just rips everything. Let's talk about the sexist posts I've been sharing with you on some of the loan officer sites that I found. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important to start posting those sexist posts to our page so people can actually see real life what people are saying in the mortgage industry. Well, I think, I think we see it, but we don't see it. But other people don't see it outside of the mortgage industry because they're all on your loan officer sites, right? Like, I think we should start holding people's feet to the fire. We can black out their names, but I really think people need to be seeing what people are actually posting online. Yeah, I reported the last one I sent you and it didn't get taken down either. So the last one I showed was a woman taking pictures of her boobs on a copier and they were referencing them as assets to the application. And there were a lot of snarky remarks underneath it. This is a public uh, loan officer site. And um, there's no place for that crap. I mean, we put up with this. No, I mean, I, no one's going to like be like, show me your dick pic to get a loan. Like, no. why, why are we doing this to women's bodies still? It's 2021. Like, knock it off. I want you to post that screenshot to our page, please. Okay. Let me I really do. Because I think people need to see. It makes me so mad. Okay, I'm like, ah! I think me, people really need to see why we're doing this conference because we're not just doing this conference because we think it'd be great to bring together a bunch of speakers that we totally want to listen to. I want, I'm doing this conference. I'm not in the mortgage industry. You just came to me because we're friends and I know how to do a conference. We're doing this conference because we are sick and tired of the sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic bullshit that is happening in the mortgage industry. And we're going to call people on it. And I'm tired. Right? Like, I'm tired. I think we should start posting that shit to our page and really start amplifying the stuff that people put. Because you have never in your entire history of being considered a dick pic an asset. But we're talking about taking your breasts and putting them on a copy machine to add them to your home loan so you can get a loan? No. Yeah. yeah. And this is 2021. It isn't like that picture was posted in 1992 when we didn't know any better. Well, I think in 1992, we knew better because we wouldn't oh. have done that in front of our mother. I mean, but, let's be honest. Sure. I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying like, I, oh, makes me so mad. So anyway, there's my righteous fury for the day. Um, I really have loved all of our um, interviews. Andy's coming back, by the way. We're coming Ooh. back to do an interview in October, which is going to be super fun. Um and Andy's speaking at the conference, Keena's speaking at the conference, Lior is speaking, Laura Brandeo speaking, Soraya speaking, I'm speaking. I just am really, really excited about this conference. So all y'all need to get tickets. I know, it's gonna be fun. And it's not gonna be like anything that's been done before. And we're not gonna, um, you're gonna have to come ready to deal with some issues. Because with, listen, we've all, if you haven't been to some kind of therapist or counselor, you need to be just some, I'm just saying everybody. Does. Coaching therapy. It's all awesome. Yeah. And I kind of feel like, um, if, if it doesn't hurt a little bit and you don't have kind of an emotional hangover afterwards, we're really not dealing with anything. We're just yeah. making 
feel good. And I don't want to just hype everybody off to go, oh, I'm going to make millions. That's not what this is about. This is about really becoming a better human being and becoming more inclusive and taking better care of our clients and ourselves uh, in a way that we should have been all along, that we should have been taught from the beginning. And oh, by the way, you'll make more money when you do that. I was just talking with my clients last night about how metamorphosis is destructive, like the natural process of evolving and becoming more vulnerable and being more open to calling in abundance and shifting the way you think is destructive because you have to get through the sludge to open up to become that butterfly. And that's why metamorphosis is so incredible. And so I'm just really thrilled we're doing this. I really enjoyed chatting with you. I've missed you so much and I love you so much. And I hope everybody enjoys this conversation. We'll make sure to get it posted up on the website and on the YouTube channel. And uh, Liz, I love your stinking face. I love your face too. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.